Our devotion for today is entitled, Every Knee Shall Bow, and it is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 15 through 25. The prophet writes, For truly you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. All of them are put to shame and confounded. The makers of idols go in confusion together. But Israel is saved by the Lord with everlasting salvation. You shall not be put to shame or confounded to all eternity. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it. He established it. He did not create it empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none besides me. A turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I myself, by myself, I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness, a word that shall not return to me. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. In him shall come, to him shall come and be ashamed. All who were incensed against him. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. Every knee shall bow. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. When the nation of Israel received that promise long ago, even the most devout had a hard time believing that it could somehow be fulfilled. For this promise was given at a time when Israel was weak and their entire existence was as threatened as any nation could be. Yet this remnant continued to embrace faith in the Lord of hosts. The idea that this faith would someday become a world religion must have appeared to them as a preposterous fantasy. Well, over half a millennium later, the Apostle Paul quoted this same passage when he wrote his letter to the Philippians. He wrote that God had exalted Jesus, whom men crucified, in order that the very mention of his name, every knee would bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. That kind of faith might have appeared to be equally preposterous. But when God gave his promise, he said, From my mouth has gone out in righteousness, a word that shall not return. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. It turned out that he is the only Savior, that everything is in his hands, and that it is folly to try to live as if he didn't exist. This doesn't mean that we admit that God was right through a majority vote. No. For as long as people have the right to make free choices, sadly, not everyone will rally around him. On the contrary, 
The longer the world remains, the fewer the confessors will be. As humanity approaches the end of time, the church will become a persecuted minority. Christ has already made this clear to us in his word. And yet, when he has finished with this world, when there is nothing left to gain from further delay or a lengthened period of mercy, then God's kingdom will come in all of its clarity, overwhelmingly in his power. Christ invited mankind into this kingdom. Every new advent means that the invitation goes out to us once again. The kingdom of God is near. A greeting comes directly to us from our God. He who said in Israel, I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not sing, I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in vain. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 19. God doesn't want us to live in darkness. It was never his intention for us to get by with small crumbs of religion that we could scrape together from our own thoughts or assumptions or from glimpses of God's glory in creation. It was never God's intention that these rays of hope would be enough for us. Sure, they tell us that God exists, but they also encourage us to seek him. And he promises that the search will not be in vain. Let us pray. Lord, you alone have awakened our longing for you. We know you are an unfathomable God, but you are also our Lord Jesus Christ's God and Father. It is your glory that radiates from the faith of face of Jesus. We know that our eyes cannot endure the sight of your light, and yet you have come you have let it come down here to earth so mild that we can see it. We know you are like a consuming fire, and yet the glow of your zeal becomes like the warmth of a father's embrace when you come to us in our Savior. Teach us to know you better and better and to love you more and more. You have given us life, and it's in your power at this moment. Help us to always say truthfully and sincerely that you are our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.